I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think I could write a good essay about Hamlet. There's just way too much going on. So in order to write a good essay about Hamlet, I think I better narrow it down. I'm going to focus on one of the most minor characters in the play, Fortinbras. <laughs> Fortinbras is such a minor, minor character. We hear a little bit about him in Act 1. Hey, maybe he's going to attack Denmark. Fortinbras is briefly on stage in Act 4. He marches across the stage with his army. He's got about seven lines in that scene. But then it's Fortinbras who gets the final words of the play. Fortinbras delivers a little eulogy uh, for Hamlet, and this brings the curtain down on the play. Obviously, Fortinbras is meant to be a contrast to Hamlet. Uh, after all, both Hamlet and Fortinbras uh, have lost their fathers. Both Fortinbras and Hamlet have vowed revenge. And then Fortinbras shows up at the very, very end of Act 5. And Hamlet says, wow, I think the election lights on him. He has my dying voice. In other words, Hamlet is suggesting that Fortinbras should become the new king of Denmark. Now, there's definitely a bit of irony here. I mean, in Act 1, everybody was so uptight about this potential invasion from Fortinbras of Norway. And then here, at the very, very end of the play, Fortinbras takes over Denmark without firing a shot. Shakespeare uses this as a device to point out the real threat was never external. Something was rotten in the state of Denmark. The real threat was always from the inside. It was always within the royal family. It was Claudius. It was Hamlet. It was Hamlet against himself. But now here at the end of uh, Act 5, the fears from Act 1 have been realized. They've been conquered by Fortinbras of Norway. Just not in the way that they expected. Now when Fortinbras walks in, there's a pile of dead bodies on stage. King Claudius is dead. Queen Gertrude is dead. Prince Hamlet is dead. Young Laertes is also dead. Horatio promises to tell the whole story of what happened uh, with Hamlet. And this prompts Fortinbras to give the final speech of the play. Let four captains bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. For he was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royally. And for his passage, the soldier's music and the rights of war speak loudly for him. Take up the bodies. Such a sight as this becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. Go, bid the soldiers shoot. Here is my thesis. This is a terrible ending for the character Hamlet. But because it's such a terrible ending for Hamlet, the character, it actually makes it the perfect ending for Hamlet, the play. I listened to Fortinbras speak about Hamlet in this final speech. And I think to myself, Fortinbras actually doesn't know Hamlet that well. I think you and I know Hamlet a lot better than Fortinbras does. I mean, after all, we've just spent five acts with Hamlet. We've heard all of these soliloquies where he's revealed all of his innermost thoughts to us. We have a good understanding of Hamlet and his character and who he is and how he thinks. And we can use our knowledge about Hamlet, the character, to analyze Fortinbras's final speech. Here's my first question. In your opinion, based on your reading of Hamlet, was Hamlet a soldier? Uh, Fortinbras says he was. Fortinbras says, bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. The soldier's music and the rights of war speak loudly for him. 
go, bid the soldiers shoot. Fortinbras wants to give Hamlet, you know, the 21-gun salute uh, that normally accompanies military funerals. In your reading of the play, did you ever see Hamlet acting like a soldier? I remember Ophelia mentioning that he was a soldier at some point, but honestly, I remember Hamlet the scholar, the student, Hamlet the philosopher. I never really saw him behaving like a soldier. So why is Fortinbras saying that we should bear Hamlet like a soldier from the stage? Well, in this play, who's a soldier? Definitely Fortinbras. Uh, Fortinbras gathered together an army. Uh, we even saw Fortinbras leading his troops across the stage in Act 4. Uh, in Act 5, he's actually returning from a successful military campaign in Poland. I think what Fortinbras is doing here is projecting. Uh, Fortinbras sees himself as a soldier and is thinking to himself, what would he want at his funeral? Fortinbras is certainly going to want the 21-gun salute, uh, the soldier's music, and the rights of war at his funeral. And Fortinbras is just assuming, well, you know, I'm a prince of Norway and a soldier, and that's what I would want at my funeral. Here's this other prince of Denmark. He's probably going to want the same thing that I wanted. But it doesn't really seem to fit with what I know about Hamlet's character. Here's my next question. From what you've read of Hamlet, do you think Hamlet would have made a good king? Okay, Fortinbras says, Hamlet was likely, had he been put on, to have proved most royally. That sounds to me like Fortinbras is saying, Hamlet would have made a good king. That's not my reading of this character. I don't think Hamlet would have made a great king of Denmark. Uh, yeah, Hamlet is a very intelligent guy. He's very thoughtful. He's very philosophical. But he doesn't seem to me like he would have been a great king. He's just not resolute enough in order to lead a nation. Okay, from those lines, I think to myself, Fortinbras doesn't really know Hamlet, the character, very well. Uh, and as a result, the things that he's saying about Hamlet don't really make sense for Hamlet, the character. But I think that's kind of fitting, because I think Hamlet, the character, is difficult to figure out. Um, if there's one thing about Hamlet, the character, I think we all tend to see a little piece of ourselves in him. And in all of his contradictions, we kind of recognize our own personal contradictions. But then there are parts of this speech that I think are very fitting to the play. For example, where are they taking Hamlet? Fortinbras says, bear Hamlet to the stage. Well, we've already talked a little bit about all of the metadrama, uh, all the times they use theater language in the play, the way they have that play within the play. Now, I think when Fortinbras says bear Hamlet to the stage, he literally means, you know, they're gonna put the coffin on a raised platform for the wake, for the viewing. But symbolically, he's talking about bringing Hamlet to the stage, which is where this whole play has taken place. The other thing I think is interesting about this speech is if you count the beats and you look for the iambic pentameter, which lines are iambic pentameter and which lines don't quite work. <clears throat> so we have the first line, the first full line, bear Hamlet like a soldier to the stage. Ten syllables, basically iambic pentameter. For he was likely, had he been put on, again, ten syllables, basically iambic pentameter, to have proved most royally and for his passage. Okay, that's twelve syllables. It's not iambic pentameter. So the line where Fortinbras says, hey, he would have made a good king, 
not only is it factually wrong about Hamlet, it's also wrong in terms of the iambic pentameter rhythm that we're expecting. But, but if you notice, when Fortinbras goes back to speaking about soldiers and war, he falls back into iambic pentameter. The soldiers, music, and the rights of war. There's a nice line of iambic pentameter, exactly ten syllables with the da-da, da-da, da-da pattern. Speak loudly for him! Okay, that's a short line. It's only five syllables long. Again, uh, when we take this idea of the soldiers' music and the rights of war and tell it to speak for Hamlet, it doesn't work factually for the character Hamlet, and it doesn't work in terms of iambic pentameter there. Um, I once saw Sir Ian McKellen analyzing a speech from Macbeth, and he talked about when you get a short line like that, that's less than ten syllables, uh, Shakespeare is indicating to the actor that they should pause and wait out the rest of the beats of that line. It makes it feel really awkward, but I think that's what Shakespeare intends here. Um, soldiers' music and the rights of war speaking for Hamlet, eh, that's awkward because it doesn't quite fit the character. Then Fortinbras goes back to speaking about battlefields and war, and he falls right back into perfect iambic pentameter. Take up the body such a sight as this, becomes the field, but here shows much amiss. Okay, not only is it iambic pentameter, but it even rhymes! And what uh, Fortinbras means with those two lines is, hey, you know, we got this pile of dead bodies here. On the battlefield, that would look right. This is not a battlefield. We're inside the royal castle. Why have the king and the prince and Laertes killed each other? Uh, how did Queen Gertrude get mixed up in this mess as well? Here, this pile of dead bodies looks totally out of place. But hey, we've got two lines of perfect iambic pentameter that form a rhyming couplet. That's a great way to put an end on a scene. Except that it's not the end. Vorton Bross has to go mess it up again. Go! Bid the soldier shoot. Okay, that's only six syllables, and it sure is an iambic pentameter. And then I guess we have another pause and some silence. And... Then we have this death march. They're going to pick up the dead bodies and march them off stage, apparently. Uh, it's going to be this awkward moment, and then maybe... Depending on the production, uh, we're going to hear that 21-gun salute uh, to our dead prince at the end of it. Hmm. Fortinbras survives and takes over Denmark? Hmm. Well, let's think about that for a moment. Fortinbras, Laertes, and Hamlet, all three of them, they all lost their fathers. They all vowed revenge. Out of those three... Shakespeare only allows Fortinbras to survive. He's the one who vowed revenge and then let himself get talked out of it. Laertes and Hamlet, they got their revenge, but they both ended up dead as well. So I think one of the things Shakespeare is asking us to question is, at what cost do we seek revenge? Fortinbras is correct, though. This pile of dead bodies on the stage here at the end, it's all wrong. It's a tragedy. It could have been avoided. And that's why I think Fortinbras' eulogy here at the end of the play is a terrible ending for Hamlet the character, but it's a perfect ending for Hamlet the play.